So I have some new CSS, and I'm just going to kind of dump it in right now. I'll paste this in Slack once I make sure that it's what I actually want. Let's see here. Let's do Thor with Hemsworth. There we go. Captain America with Evans. There we go. Cool, cool. Now, I don't have a class for my favorite thing anymore. Let me add that real quick. So where are my flicks? Here's my flick. So flick.fave. So if you have two classes on the same element and you want to use that in the selector, just don't put a space between them, dot flick, dot fave. That means find me an element with both of those classes. And then I want the background color to be uh, some kind of like super light yellow. So if I do... Um, Without um, without any extensions? Yellow. Okay. Holy smokes. Sure enough. Well, that's pretty snazzy. Um, is that light enough? That's pretty dang light. I'm going to stick with that. Let's see how that looks. Eh, not good enough. Not specific enough. Probably not specific enough. Favorite. Yeah, it's getting it's getting overridden by this by this rule. <coughs> if I put this rule in the other order, or do I have to do I have a specificity problem? It's the order. Cool. All right, so that works. Um, kind of want to structure this another little tiny bit different. Um, I, want, I want my properties to be inside a div too. Um, I want a div containing all the properties on the left, a div containing all the buttons on the right. So let's tweak that just a tiny bit. So I do this here, const properties, da -da -da, then I do my for each. So I have render property, if I had render properties, render properties, that should probably take both the flick and the item, just like the other thing. And I basically wanted to do all this stuff. This time I'm going to make a div const. Uh, div equals document dot create element div. I'll give it a class div dot class name list dot add um, info. Get the list of properties for each one. Render property and append it to my div. Then just make sure I return my div at the end. Then back in render item, add all the properties, and I'll just call this dot render properties, pass in flick and item. Item dot append child. Properties. Now they're all over here on the left. I don't want this false to show up there. That's useless. So I'm going to add a little bit of CSS here. Um, so this is my this is my Chris span here. I style it a little differently from the title. So I'll also make one for span dot fave in this 
favorite, and this time I will actually say display none. So we've seen display block. You can also just say display none, and it just won't be there at all. So I'm trying to hide those the false thing there. So Thor, Hemsworth. There we go. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I'm gonna, I am going to answer your question. I just wanted to do that again. So here's the trick for that. Nth of type. So this is what's called a pseudo class. So you can have classes that you don't add yourself, but that sort of represent the current state of the element on the page. Hover is the most common example. I think I've got hover in here several times. Um, may have got on something a little more. Yeah. So I have button dot remove colon hover here. So basically, if your mouse happens to be hovering over it, it temporarily has this class on it. So it's a pseudo class, so you use a colon instead of a dot. Um, but there are lots of these pseudo classes. But this way I can have it a different background color when I hover over it. So one of the pseudo classes is nth of type, um, where you can actually put a number in here, or you can say even or odd. And it means truly like if it's a, if it has that class, flick, and it is, an odd-numbered sibling, basically, then it'll be styled differently from the others. So that's how I'm getting the stripe effect. Yeah. Yep. Can you do it by the Boolean? Say, like, if it's true, then have it be yellow? Um, well, yeah, I did. I mean, I did do that. That's this. So dot flick dot fave, background color yellow. So she's referring to the fact that even if it's not a favorite, like, every other one is gray, right? See that, how they're striped? Yeah. Like, I don't know how well that shows up here. No, okay. it's, pr it's pretty darn light on these TVs, but... No, I mean, I, I see it. Yeah. I assume that I'm that. That stripe effect. Yeah, the, the favorite's a, a different thing. So that's a little more straightforward. Okay, right. Right, yeah. I was answering the question you were asking, right? Yeah. I also made this green instead of red because uh, we have delete buttons that are red. Ooh, look at that. Zoop, zoop, zoop. They get bigger. So that, let's see. Here I have my, all my buttons have no border. They have the same amount of padding. They all change to the hand uh, cursor when you cover over them. So buttons by default do not. They stay the default cursor. I like them to have the, uh, the little hand thing, the pointer. And then when you hover over them, I use transform scale, which makes it bigger or smaller. You know, 1.0 would be stay the same size. 1.1 is 10% bigger. So that makes it bigger when I hover over it. And then I have this transition up here. So transition lets you um, do all of the things that I do when I make the sound of a zoop. Those are transitions. So you can say on a property by property basis um, how long you want it to take if you ever change those properties. So if background color ever changes on these, I want it to happen over a quarter of a second. And this ease out thing means don't necessarily do it evenly over that, um, over that quarter of a second, but rather start out doing the animation really fast and then kind of slow down as you get toward the end. So it's pretty subtle over a quarter of a second but it has kind of a nice little effect. If you made this five seconds long, you could see the difference a little, little better. So it's not just a linear transition. That's, an that's totally an optional thing. And you can make custom, uh, custom animations there too. So I'm saying that the transformation, this scale thing, should happen over just a tenth of a second. But it's not instantaneous, which just makes it a little, a little nicer. And I just refresh the page so they're not there anymore. Zoop, 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 zoop. You dig? So 
all kinds of new tricks in the CSS if you want to look at it. Uh, feel free. CSS trick is a good place to look up any of these properties or, um, or selectors that you're not familiar with. But I think those are the highlights. Um, let's see, anything else I did? So by putting, by putting all of the properties inside a div and all of the actions inside a div, I just made it easier for the actions to be all the way to the right using Flexbox. That just made that easier. So flick, that's the li. I say display flex. That says to use Flexbox. And I said that with Flexbox, a lot of what you're doing is telling it how to use the space that's left over. So justify content space between means the leftover space is going to go in between the items. So they're going to be at the extreme ends. So my properties are going to be all the way to the left. My actions are going to be all the way to the right. And align items center. It's one of the nicest uh, things about Flexbox that you may not appreciate if you haven't struggled with CSS before. But in CSS, it used to be really, really hard to make things centered vertically. That used to be a real pain in the neck. With Flexbox, it's super easy. Align item center just takes care of it. There were a million hacks for this uh, before. Um, it was awful. This is so easy. Otherwise, my buttons and my text would not be lined up. Yeah. So where did you put the Flexbox thing? Because I've had a lot of trouble doing it vertically before. Okay. So you put it on the container. Okay. So if you have two, two items that you want to align vertically, mm -hmm. whatever their common uh, parent is, you want display flex on that and align items center. So you don't need to put anything on the, on the children, the things you're actually aligning, okay. just on the parent. But that does need to make sure, you do need to make sure they're actual siblings. So if, for example, um, if I were trying to line up the things that are inside one of those divs, then I would need Flexbox on that container too, okay. which I think I have actually done here. But, yep. And yesterday we noticed there's a value rate of click the side to Flexbox. So if we got the Flexbox off and it tells you like what's your own yeah. And if you do want to really dig deep on this stuff, um, there's also a video series called What the Flexbox, which is just flexbox.io. Super easy to remember URL, flexbox.io. That's from Wes Boss, the same person who did JavaScript 30 um, and, and a bunch of others. And it's totally free and it's super thorough. There's like 20 some videos. Um, so if you are interested in CSS layout, that's a really good tutorial for that.